I'm Heather Monson. I'm a technical writer by day and a mommy by day and a teacher by day. And in rare moments at night, I make costumes and leather masks. Uh, so that's why I'm here. I am a, an independent artist uh, most of the time. Um, and I have experimented with pretty much every medium under the sun. And uh, one of those is mask making. Um, I do mostly paper mache and, uh, what is it? Composite mask. Um, yeah, there's a term for it. And I can't remember what the term is. Assemblage. That's right. There it's kind go. of assemblage stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. And that's what I do. Okay. Um, so I was thinking maybe we could each kind of walk through our mask making process, describe what we do, and then leave a bunch of time for questions, answers, helping people troubleshoot anything there. So for my mask making, um, leather is a very unforgiving material. Um, when it comes to cutting, at least when you're shaping and stuff, you have a little more flexibility but it's very much a measure twice, cut once kind of material. So all of my masks start with a rough sketch, very rough sketch. This one's not even done yet. Um, but yeah, you can see we have rough eye holes that I'll refine when I'm detailing things more. We have basic shapes. You want to make sure it extends out far enough to kind of cover the side of your face so that you have room for ear loops or headband or however you like wearing your masks. Um, one easy cheat I do for the eye holes is I trace around the outside of my glasses because um, that way I know it will fit my face and let me wear my glasses with the mask, which is kind of important because I'm blind as a bat without them. Um, so once we have sketch complete, I... <clears throat> I, I cut out the mask shape. This is the one I was playing with for today's um, panel, um, going for kind of a Red King of Omadon, if any of you remember that old movie um, kind of look, because frankly, it would be quick and easy to do. Um, so start with a template. <clears throat> Once you've got a template you're happy with, oh, by the way, see, this is the spot where you can kind of refine the eye holes a bit. If I'm making a specifically girly mask, I might kind of um, draw the pattern so that we'll have bits of leather to curl up for eyelashes on the mask, which is lots of fun to do, but I did not do it today. Um, so there's our template. Here's how it looks when it's traced onto leather. Um, for your leather mask making, you do want to use vegetable tan leather, home tan leather, um, because they'll give you very different effects. Um, the vegetable tan leather, you can get wet and um, shape it um, <clears throat> and get a lot of fun customization effects that don't even begin to appear on this. Um, but with, um, with the chrome tan, it's just soft from the get-go, which is great if you're making leather costumes, um, but it's terrible if you're wanting to shape it and have a mask that will um, stay the way you shape it. Okay, um, so veg tan leather, if you're wanting to do this kind of mask, um, and once it's traced onto the pattern, you can use very sharp scissors or shears or um, exacto knives. Um, just you need something that has a good keen edge because otherwise you wind up with very rough edges and rough edges for leather tend to feel kind of sandpapery against your skin. Not awesome, so do not recommend. Um, and yeah, once it's all cut out, um, you would soak it in, um, in hot water, um, not boiling water. You, you don't wanna do the armor boiled leather thing here because again, the inside will feel like sandpaper. And that's not wonderful when you're making something that you're going to wear against your skin. Um, it'd be fun to do a leather armor panel sometime. And I know people who could go on it. And that's a thought for next year. Um, anyway, uh, for this, once you've soaked it in water, 
you put it on a styrofoam head. Um, I prefer the male shaped heads because they're a lot closer to actual human face proportions than the dainty little female ones than they, that they sell at the craft stores, which unless you're looking to display a wet, a wig are about the most dead useless things in existence. Um, Bobby nods. Bobby knows what I am talking about. Yes. Okay. Um, so you take your styrofoam head and you squish your leather into the shapes you want. And here's what it looks like as it's drying, mostly dry. I, um, you can just let it air dry. Um, in order to have it ready for today's presentation, I confess to taking a hair dryer to this one which works great, gets it dry in much less time and still gives you good effects. In fact, if you're working with little pointy bits, um, you might actually want to use a hair dryer because it helps you um, get them hardened up faster so they don't sag while the rest of it's drying. Um, but anyway, here's how a mask looks when it's pinned to a head and is dry enough that you can take it off and start painting it. And so during the remainder of the panel, that's what I'm going to be quietly doing in the background, um, taking it off the head and starting to paint um, so that I can kind of show you what a freshly completed one looks like by the end. Um, my preferred paints for these masks are um, Lumiere brand. Um, think the candle from Beauty and the Beast. That dude, yeah, paints with the same name easy to remember. And uh, they add a nice bit of shimmer. They stick well on the leather. But if you really, really want to, if something just gets totally screwed up, um, you can scrub these off and start over. If you're working with leather stains, um, they, they give a beautiful effect. You get all the tones and textures of the leather showing through a lot better than you do with the paint but no sparkle and does not scrub off. Um, so that's why, um, that's why I use um, these paints. And uh, so yeah, that's the process. That's what we uh, are doing and over to Bobby. <laughs> um, my method is very different um, because I started doing this when I absolutely had no money. <laughs> so buying leather was more expensive. Uh, but one thing you always have around the house is paper that could be recycled. And so my method starts with, and it's it's a man face mask. If I had my own plaster face, I would have been doing that. But um, I don't have that either. Uh, and I had to run and grab my my box that I left out on the in the other room <laughs> because I forgot to bring it in here. Ah, oh, but um, so I uh, don't have any cool little in progress things, but I have a lot of things in different stages. So and you can see how dirty this thing is. Um, it's because this is what I use to, to glue on and it pops right off. It's really useful. So I start with with paper, just thin strips of paper, and I just layer it on with uh, I use a mixture of about Oh, well, what is it, about 60% glue and then 40% water because um, we want it to soak into the fibers of the paper because um, it'll make a really nice uh, cement thing that you'll see soon. And it's really super light and super cheap and it's not quite as moldable, not, not nearly as moldable as leather and not necessarily as comfortable to wear on the face unless you're sculpting it to a person the specific person's face but this starts off really weird and not human shaped necessarily and so when you're working on the paper you can use a little bit of water to um once you pull it off you can use a little bit of water to to stretch it a little bit Let's see i th think i had one okay so Here's kind of what it looks like, and I stretched it out a bit. And I usually cover, almost completely cover the eye holes so I can decide later where I need them. Um, but, you know, once again, once you cut them, that's that's it. 
because you can kind of go and layer more and try it again, but that is a pain to have to do. And at this stage, I see, I start with black paper and then I go to another color to white. Yeah. And then I know that I've covered everything. So, and then at the last, I decide what a sculpting I want to do. And I've used to like, to begin with, I started with paper mache clay. And this thing is hard as a rock and super heavy. And I mean, it's got cool horns, but it's really heavy. So I just, you know, tried some other things. Uh, this is like a foam clay, but it's still kind of heavy. And so I started going to um, foam and uh, what is it? They have uh, foam clay and stuff. Mm -hmm. Kind of with the little foam bubbles. And that works pretty well. And then I'll get some colored um, tissue paper and because it'll, it'll mold to the shapes really well. But you're never going to get smooth, smooth shapes this way. But anyway, and then, uh, then I cover it again and then I start painting. And, uh, or like this one, I covered it with, uh, it's kind of a leather texture paper and it just needs its final paint job. And I don't have a lot of good examples here of the paint. Oh, I found them. This is what it looks like when I pull it off of the, the mold. Oh, cool. And then I can use the water and spritz on the inside and stretch it out how I need to. And uh, so, yeah, it looks pretty, pretty spooky when there's no, no face. So um, that's the point when I, um, oh, I've also used, this one got all warped, so I never finished it, but it was, it was pretty cool with the, Ooh, with the spider okay. headdress. Cool. Let's see how, how the head got all warped. This um, one I used hot glue. And hot glue is a great thing. I use the hot glue to do the details. And then the, uh, mm -hmm. the paper mache, the, the tissue paper covers it really well. And then it's really easy to paint. Oh, I wish that one hadn't deformed. Mm -hmm. That one was pretty cool. Um, so then, then the painting happens. And I have a couple examples. This one I did with some 3D paint and gave it this kind of texture. And then the, the other sections are smooth, just the surface, and uh, did some painting on that. And added things like the stone. I, what I did with the little additions here is you wrap them in the tissue paper, and then you, you kind of tack them down with just any kind of glue where, you're, where you want it. And then I went around and you know bundled it up in front, and then went around the edges with hot glue, and then pulled the stone out and then laid the tissue paper over the the hot glue and then and then it was ready to go and I had this kind of custom fitted spot for the stone uh -huh. um, but there's an, here's another one this one horn sculpted out of um, foam and then uh, attached with glue and then covered with tissue paper and some gel medium to give them this I don't know if you can see it at all, but this kind of, kind of, uh, you know, stripey horn kind of look. Yeah. And then this one is just the surface that was finished. It does look a little, you know, bumpy. It's not smooth like the leather, but you see, I did sculpt this to come out and you can do that with paper. Um, you can do it better with leather, but you can do that with paper. It's just a little, takes a little more patience, but you can see how thin these are and they're super sturdy. Paper is a really neat material. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Great and admiration then, for your mastery of that material. <laughs> it's, it's If it's cheap, I've played with it. <laughs> but then you know holes and your ribbons and these are mostly mm -hmm. ribbons for display but if you tie the big bundle around the head it looks kind of cool in the back because then you get mm -hmm. all these tassely bits <clears throat> so, but that's that's pretty much my method um mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of the process of doing it for me 
Let's see where you are. All right. I am at the messy stage. Ooh, because there's have it kind of down here and then kind of flamey colors going up. But yeah. That's neat. Yeah. Should, we, should we go and see if we can answer questions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's see if we can answer some questions and I'll just keep at this and keep you guys updated on its progress. Okay. Uh, Robin Swift asks, what mask creation are you the mo are you most proud of? Which mask was the most challenging to create, and how did you overcome the challenges? Okay. Um, let's see. I keep going first. Do you want to take first stab at this sure. one, Bobby? This, this one. This is because, and I kept it, ah, because I like the stones, and, and this texture turned out so, so cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the one I'm most proud of, and the little wire with the beads going. Okay. Oh, this is another thing I detail added that I that I didn't mention is at the top I add this ribbon strap thing, mm -hmm. and on a lot of them it folds down, so it's kind of just across the forehead. But then it's really easy oh. to hang. since you know you want to be able to hang up your masks because you're not going to okay. wear them all the time. So mm -hmm. that's my favorite. Because I like textures. Very good. Okay. Um, oh, let's see. Favorite mask for me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to go with a, a project, I think. I was, several years ago, I was in a production of, um, and now, of course, the name falls out of my brain. The one with Beatrice and Benedict, help me, oh, Bob. Much to do about nothing. Much to do about nothing. Yes, yes. I was in a production of Much to Do About Nothing, and there's that masquerade scene where, um, where everyone, the whole cast, extras, and everybody is in masks, and uh, the the show's director and I decided we wanted leather masks because they would look they would look cool and period and it was this small small theater where everyone would be able to see the details that we put into our costumes um and so leather masks it was and the making of them of course fell to me and it was my first big leather mask making project and so i made masks for the entire cast and they loved them so much that they oh bought them after the show and kept them. And we still see them occasionally at conventions. So, so that's one, that's one I was really proud of one that I really had fun with. And let's see, we were supposed to cover most challenging ones too, and how we overcame the challenges, right? Yeah. Am I remembering the question? Yeah. correctly? Yep. Okay. Uh, so let's, Jump back, cover that. Um, okay, you're, you're, you might as well go. You're <laughs> okay. I'm I'm talking anyway. I'll keep talking. <laughs> I can do that. Okay. Um, probably the most challenging was um, a commission I took. Um, it was um, it was a butterfly mask. It was to be shaped like a butterfly, and it was enormous like the wings went up to here and came down to here wow. and so yeah yeah so that one was challenging because um i had to modify my normal process a bit because um the styrofoam head the neck just plain doesn't go down as far as this mask needed to go down for the little traily winging bits um and a, a problem I discovered when I kind of just put it on the head anyway and hung it over the edge of a desk was that mask was heavy. And so the head went whoop. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that was a challenge. I wound up kind of getting painter's tape and putting it all over the back of the head so that the stabilization pieces would actually stick to it and then taping it to the desk so that the front part could hang <laughs> off the desk <laughs> so that it could dry in the right shape. It was awesome and 
kind of hilarious in retrospect. Um, and then painting it, it had this cool kind of mottled effect that the girl was wanting me to imitate. And um, so we wound up doing, I wound up doing kind of splatter paint over a big chunk of it. And then, um, then kind of uh, going over it in spots with translucent paint to, to kind of give it the right mottled, but not so modeled that you can't see the other designs kind of look. Uh, so, so that was a challenge um, in that it required several departures from normal procedure. And to overcome the challenges, I just made the needed departures from procedure and made it work. Um, okay, over to you, Bobby. Well, I think this one right here, I have it, is the most stressful and it's still stressful because it's all messed up. Mm. But uh, getting these, it is so gorgeous, Bobby. It, it's so oh, this the the webbing, getting that right with a glue gun mm -hmm. drove me crazy. Oh, yeah. And then and then it all warping afterwards was just sad. Oh, and getting the uh, one of the big challenges was getting this kind of coronet of lace here proper and stretched mm -hmm. out and then also mm -hmm. making it comfortable against the head there oh yeah um, which still needs some work but i kind of quit i got it finished and it was all perfect and then it warped Dope. so it's really frustrating when you go mm -hmm. and you work so hard on something and then it doesn't work mm -hmm. but any any project where you're where you're struggling to get your vision to come to mm -hmm. life is probably the hardest <laughs> when you have it in your head you're like no 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 i know exactly what this should look like and and you can't make it work oh yes i am familiar with that feeling but i think i think with this mask i can um fix it uh but i don't think i can fix it in a way that will be comfortable to wear but mm. honestly that's okay it can hang on a wall and it, it can right, be a so. display piece and be gorgeous as such yeah oh yeah so that's probably what how I'll fix it. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Do we have more questions? We have a lot of questions. Excellent. Uh, I love lots of questions. <laughs> Rabin writes, what are your best sources for leather? Uh, for veg tan, I like to go to the local Tandy shop because, um, then I can kind of feel it and see for myself what the weight of it is. Um, cause, cause for leather, that's important. You, you don't want it too thick and heavy or it's not comfortable to wear on your face and you don't want it too thin or it makes really flimsy masks. And those aren't much fun either. You want it to be able to take a beating. Um, well I do anyway. Okay, over to you, Bobby. Say hi. Aww. There's cat, hi, everyone. Hi, <laughs> <There's> pancake. Hi, <laughs> pancake. I don't, I don't use leather, so I, I have no idea. Okay. Okay. Uh, Wolf Song <laughs> asks, "Do you ever sew anything to make your masks?" Oh yeah, this um, this I sewed mm -hmm. because I wanted it a specific shape. Um, I did a lot of hand sewing because it's easier with lace. So yeah, this I sewed um, to get just right. And I have used fabric uh, the same way in strips. So that's not mm -hmm. sewing, but I have used that with the paper mache, which is fun. But only generally when it's needed or if there's like a hood involved. Mm -hmm. But that makes it a little easier because you don't have to, you know, either get the sewing machine out or know how to sew. But yeah, I've I've often done costumes that are supposed to go with my mask, um, and that's fabric. Um, uh, challenge with that is is getting colors to match somewhat, because um, obviously um, I'm I'm not putting the fabrics on the masks. I'm making the masks and making the costumes and trying to make them play nicely together. Um, it'd be fun to try 
tacking down fabric on some of these leather ones, get some new effects going. I'll have to try that. Thank you for the idea question person. Okay. Uh, Epidantrix asks, what sources do you draw inspiration from your, from, for your masks? Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You want to take first step like, at this one, Bobby? I'll keep I, going. I, I like creepy now. stuff. <laughs> I like creepy things. I like um, fantasy. And, uh, you know, I'm always keeping my eye open for things that inspire me. So once I found this set of little, they were about this big, mini tarot cards. And so mm -hmm. I I made, uh, I, I took most of the paper off the back and then uh, put them across a mask and then sewed a little a little scarf thing that uh -huh. went with it and that was that was a lot of fun doing kind of oh, a fortune teller so cool. um, but you know I wouldn't have thought of that if I hadn't seen the cards um, so generally I, I just keep my eyes open I find a lot of inspiration from nature and just the wonderful mm -hmm. in and out um, negative spaces that you see in nature Oh, yeah. I love that. Okay. Um, where I'm often making masks for plays or for um, LARP characters, um, yes, I'm that kind of geek. And I love it. And I do not apologize. Ha ha. Um, but where, where I'm uh, often sewing for those kind of um, projects, um, I'll often take some degree of inspiration from um, the characters who will be wearing the masks. Uh, for example, um, that Much Ado About Nothing project, um, before making the masks, I asked each character or each actor playing a character to kind of talk to me about what they saw as their spirit animal. Um, I Okay, probably not the most PC of term choices, but that was the term we used back then for what what creature would you associate with your character? And then I was able to kind of make the masks around how they um, perceived their character, um, like uh, the girl playing Beatrix saw herself, saw her character as kind of this cat full of mischief and mystery. And so she got this cool Egyptian cat mask. Oh, I loved that mask. I was a little bit sad that the actress bought it because I wanted that one. Um, and then um, uh, one fellow saw his character as very much a trickster. So he got a fox mask and um, just on and on things like that. Um, we we wound up with some really fun stuff. The dude playing Benedict in that show had associations with Batman. So we made him almost a Batman looking mask and it was so cool. <laughs> um, yes, lots of fun. Um, so, so yeah, and then like Bobby said, nature, art, um, just, Whatever you can find, really. I mean, yeah, ample sources for inspiration are, are out there. Oh, and, and just pull your friends. What's right for your project? Yeah, pull your friends. They'll they'll happily give you yeah. ideas. Absolutely. I've I've gotten a lot from my gaming groups. You know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. About act. Robin Glassy asks, if you're just starting out with making leather masks, what tools do you suggest getting? Um, well, the nice thing about the leather masks is that beyond the leather, um, it's, it's not expensive. The other parts are not expensive. These foam heads, you can see this poor guy's getting pretty beat up. I've had him for a few years, and many masks have been formed upon his surfaces. Um, these are under $10 at pretty much any craft store these days. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, I, I do strongly recommend having a styrofoam head to form things on because... You need something for the leather to shape to while it dries 
and trying to let it dry on your own head is not fun. Um, done that a couple times and just no, use styrofoam. Miserable. Just totally miserable. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so you need leather, you need a styrofoam head. Um, you need some sharp pins. Um, same kind you'd use for pinning costumes will work great. You don't need anything fancy. Um, if you're going to do multi-layered masks, like if you're going to do a basic mask and then have a bird's beak shape type thing coming out, um, you want some good quality leather glue, which they also sell at Tandy. Um, and pretty much any salesperson will be able to point you to what you need. Um, so yeah, um, leather, head, pins, um, something to dye or paint it with. And like I explained earlier, it's really up to you what kind of paints or leather dyes you want to use. Um, different materials will give you different effects. Um, but just um, three to five basic colors will get you started, so you don't need to spend a ton there either. Um, especially since um, you can play with colors, blend them, get different gradations going. Um, I'll be showing you some fun gradations in a few minutes. Um, yeah, yeah, those those are the basic materials you need. You can you can expand from there, but those basics will will get you started and let you have some fun. Okay, um, next. Robin Glassy asks, are there websites you Glassy, recommend you to go questions. to? I love you. Sorry. <laughs> are, there, are there any websites you recommend to go to for, uh, for mask and costume help for those just getting into mask and costume cosplay? Um, oh, let's see. Um, oh, goodness. Um, I've followed some good cosplayers on Facebook. Oh, let's see. Um, who are some good ones? Um, for working with foam, um, Kamui Cosplay does some amazing stuff with foam. And pretty much anything you can do with foam uh, will work similarly with leather. It's just you'll need to use a different glue on your pieces. You'll need to wet form the pieces instead of using a heat gun to shape them. Um, but a lot of the same techniques will apply. And so um, so especially if you're looking to get into leather, I'd, I'd probably recommend following her looking up her site. Um, I know she sells a bunch of patterns as well, so that can be another way to get started. Um, and yeah, just look around. Google Images is my friend when I'm trying to figure something out. Um, yeah, that's me. Anything you'd like to add, Bobby? I don't know a lot of sites that would do what I do, and now I'm like, <laughs> oh, I should just make my own and I should just do a video on my channel about that. Yes. yes. Verily, we love seeing Bobby work. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> Yay. We like happy Bobbies. Okay. Uh, next question. Okay. Epi Dantrix asks, uh, mm -hmm. Bobby, you mentioned using a couple of different paints like 3D. Any recommendations for brands or clever applications? Have you tried mixing paints into the glue as you shape it? Oh, oh yeah. One of the one of the things I actually like the most is um, getting your own inserts to put in the glue, like really fine sand or things like that. That's that's a lot of fun to get a good texture that you can then play with with washes in different uh, paints. Um, I, I'm i not sure what the name of the brand is, and I'm not sure if they still make it, but there was this wonderful 3D paint that uh, that you could build up, and it would dry, and it wouldn't shrink very much. It was m like made to not shrink too much, so you could get some wonderful textures. Um, Gel Medium is one of my favorites, and you can get Gel Medium in pretty much any brand. You can even get it in bottles. 
uh, I have a bunch that I got from a closeout store. So it was from Italy. It was it was great stuff. It, mm-hmm. it is. I bought like seven bottles. So I have gel medium until I die. But <laughs> it's it's great stuff to play with. And you can do really thick. I mean, it's going to take forever to dry, but you can do really thick uh, textures or really thin textures. And like I said, every brand pretty much has one because they're the best thing to use to thin out your acrylics without losing cohesion on your acrylics. So um, it's good stuff. And then, you know, using different things, you can glue down different things. Once I, I had a whole bunch of those little styrofoam beads that they sell around Christmas that are supposed to be like snow, but they're really just a pain in the butt and they never leave your house. Um, those in glue, those were fun. Got this really neat bumpy texture. That's it was great. Cool. And then if you want to go and like take them apart in a piece of styrofoam, you get little jagged edges. But that's, well, only do it if you have a lot of time on your hands and you're brain dead. Because it'll make you crazy. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's what I got to say there. <laughs> So, I hope that that was, you know, useful. <laughs> useful. So Robin Swift asks, how long do your masks last? And is there anything special you have to do to maintain or store it? Oh, I know the leather masks last for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the leather ones. Um, yeah, basically the only thing you can do... Um, Normal wear and tear will not do anything to these things. They are very durable. Um, if you if you get them wet, you might need to pin them back to the head, kind of reform them a bit. Um, but you would have to get them like soaking wet, stand outside in a rainstorm for hours uh, to get them that wet, or throw them in the tub, get them that wet. Um, basically, things you're not likely to do to a leather mask anyway um or getting it way 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 too hot you could get some singeing damage um but again not something you're likely to run into in normal cosplay um leather masks that's one of the things i love about them that's why they get used in so many plays and so many um uh larp games is because they are so very durable they can take a beating and come back and take another beating. Um, so, so yeah. Um, that reminds me of another fun play project I did with them. We did masks for the Uncle Tom's Cabin of the King and I, and it worked great there too. Um, but yeah, uh, leather masks, marvelously durable. That's their strong suit. Water is the enemy to pretty much anything, especially paper. Even if you seal the paper, yeah. which is really good, don't don't toss it in the tub. Um, <laughs> the 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 paper mache is remarkably sturdy, and part of the reason mm-hmm. why is because I don't I don't use newspaper or anything like that. I use mm-hmm. typing paper and then um, tissue paper, which gets completely saturated, and it's almost half glue. <laughs> Yeah, and glue is sturdy stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, so I have had them break when people dropped them and stepped on them. Uh, Mm -hmm. They stick together really well. And that's Mm -hmm. not what usually kills them. What usually kills them is high humidity. Um, Mm -hmm. I had somebody bring one back east and uh, to, I can't remember what state it was, but it's super humid state. And uh, it slightly warped, but that was it. So it uh, that's part of the problem with this is a little warping because it got a little, probably got a little too humid somewhere. But, but other than that, I've had one hanging on my wall for 13 years and it still looks good. So of course it hasn't been worn a lot. So, <laughs> but how often do you really walk around wearing a mask? <clears throat> Unless you're in a play, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, there are times when you wear masks a lot, but yeah, everyday life not so much. 
you'll still probably spend more time hanging on a wall. But, yeah. Because you yeah. want to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Cat Pharaoh asks, Bobby, where did you get your base face for your masks? Did you say it was plastic? Yep. I got it at Joann's. It's just one of those simple full face masks from Joann's. And mm -hmm. it's just plastic. And, and like, now, like I said, is a great time to pick them up. Just oh yeah, saying. definitely. That's when they have the biggest range and, mm -hmm. and it's flexible and I can adjust the paper afterwards and, and yeah. And it pops off really well. Just regular craft store. Okay. Uh, Nick Mills asks, how can you paint or color the masks so that they look like many different styles of masks from an audience perspective, depending on lighting? They've seen some productions where the same mask looks like one thing, but then when you change the spotlights, the painting and color combination makes it look totally different. Ooh. Yeah, my guess would be they're playing with um, with different textures that would look different lit from the top than from an angle. And um, you can get that with, um, let's see, um, I know in this Lumiere brand paint, um, they have some paints that, um, that have different colors of paint and sparkly stuff mixed together. And so, yeah, if you're looking at it straight on, it might look silver. From an angle, it'll look blue. From a different angle yet, you'll catch silver highlights and blue undertones. Um, so they could very well be playing with um, paints and dyes like that. Um, any thoughts, Bobby? Well, I've seen, I've seen that, like you said, you know, with different paints, but, you know, in different sculptures and textures. Uh, you can kind of plan it if you, if you think enough about... If your lighting's coming from here, you know, mm -hmm. you get that that dramatic, you know, underlight if it comes from here mm -hmm. or overlight, and then you get the underlight. And mm -hmm. so the sculpt would would do that a lot, I mm -hmm. think so. Yeah. Now that's something I haven't played with an awful lot. Great question. Okay, uh, Nick Mills asks, how do you start, decide which colors to use for any given mask? That's always a tough one. Sometimes you have an idea before you start. Like if you have a theme, if you're like, I want to do some kind of flamey theme, then mm -hmm. it's kind of easy, already chosen. Other than that, it's yeah. so broad. I do sketches, and I learned this in my illustration mm -hmm. career, is, is, you know, just kind of do a basic outline of your mask and then try a whole bunch of different colors until you find the, the set you like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, <clears throat> pardon me, yeah, I'll second the importance of sketches and just playing around. And I'm going to need to duck AFK for just one moment to swap out a dried out thing of paint for one that actually works. Um, but go oh, ahead. Oh. I'll be right here listening. Just, um, yeah, try it out, try it out. next question. It makes me so sad. I know. Me too. I hate it when that happens. Oh. So it's the next question. Wolf Song asks, can we see the mask Heather is making one more time? Oh, absolutely. It's um it's almost done. I'm just getting some gold to finish off the, the points of the flamey bits. Behold. Can you see? Neat. Okay. Yay. And time for the final test. Can I wear my glasses with it? Uh, nope, I angled the eye holes wrong. So this one will require some fiddling with later. Um, but yeah, at this point, once I get the horns um, finished, I'd be uh, poking holes in the sides for an elastic cord to go through, and then basically we'd be done. Okay. Well, thanks for thanks for coming, and thanks for all your questions. Those are great. Oh, wow, we are at time. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. You. Yeah, thanks for the questions, everybody. This has been fun.